appears to just be a terrible accident, no criminal intent. And as the president addressed the nation, offering support to the families of those unaccounted for and pledging all of the nation's resources to help Baltimore recover, he also shared that the now affected port there in Baltimore is the busiest in the country for car imports, 850,000 moving through there every year with the help of 15,000 workers. I'm joined now live by Tim Campbell. He is a local president of the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, which runs the port of West Sacramento. Tim, good morning to you. Good morning. How are you? I am OK. This is just a tragic day in the country. Given the work that you do, rivers, vessels moving through a port area, that's all top of mind for you. What went through your mind when you heard about this accident in Baltimore? Tragic. Unbelievable. It just goes to show you how vulnerable uh, these these industries are with the ships coming in and out of ports. Um, make sure the vessels are guided correctly. Uh, make sure the ITF is very much involved with the, make sure the ships are in good working order coming in and out of the ports. It's, uh, it's imperative that we stay on top of this stuff. This accident happened early in the morning when port operations obviously are not at their busiest. But if a vessel were to lose control in our area and cause an accident that closed the port here, it would just be devastating. Yeah, correct. So we, we do something a little different in our port. It's an inland river port. It's the farthest inland river port in California. And we have a tug operation through the Master Mates and Pilots Union that brings the ships in and out of the port under tug power instead of under ship power. That's the difference between our port and some of these bigger ports who, who uh, the ships leave under their own power. Alrighty, you see vessels come and go all the time, every day. You and your union believe this incident really underscores the need for thoughtful bridge infrastructure. You know how precise and careful these boat pilots really work to be. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, the the bridge itself is is vulnerable. Anytime something touches it, it could take a bridge down instantaneously, as we saw in Baltimore. I spoke to Scott Owen, who's the vice president of ILA out there and on the East Coast in Baltimore. And he said they finished the ship up right around 11.30 or 12.30 and his people were uh, going across the bridge afterwards and barely missed this accident. It's and just a tragedy all the way around. And our local, local 18 Longshore Division, our hearts and prayers go out to everybody in Baltimore, families, workers, ship crew, and especially thanking the safety crew that's getting in there and, and trying to rescue everybody right now. We know that the boat pilot, the harbor pilot, was able to get a May Day in to shut down traffic going across the bridge. You just mentioned that, you know, some of the, the colleagues that you have in this industry had just finished work and were going across that bridge home. This is really a delicate dance between several different sorts of specialties that make our rivers and ports work. Yeah, correct. Uh, I reached out to Max Vekic, who's, the, who's in the Federal Maritime Commission up in Washington, D.C., and I spoke with Ingo Esters, who's their legislative rep in Washington, D.C., to find out what we can do to better assist to make sure this doesn't happen anymore. All right. Accidents like this should not happen. Definitely, definitely. And a lot of people will be looking at the answers as to why all we know right now is that they were reporting a loss of control on that container ship, but we don't know the reason for that loss of control. Thank you so much for your perspective on port operations and sharing about how you've reached out to try to get some answers and support the people there in Baltimore. We appreciate you. Thank you very much for your time.